I got a part of it. I'm not going to play the whole thing because okay. it'll be six minutes. I got the 50 second part of it, and then we can go from there. Uh, and obviously, I got a lot of other topics I want to go into with you, but let's start off with our buddy here, John Ray. Did you and Chad Nichols ever do anything together? Absolutely not. Okay, He's Dr. Follow? Kervorkian to me, bro. In 1996, I went to guest post for him, took me to dinner, and he asked me if I needed any help. I just got second place to Dorian Yates. No, I don't need your help. I don't even know you. And I think that's where we started to butt heads. Ronnie Coleman will defend him to the ninth degree, but he was in that bathtub near death in 2001 at the direction of Chad Nichols, who's not a doctor, by the way. There's at least five deaths. Don Youngblood, Nasser El Sambadi, Dallas McCarver, uh, and a few other people as a bodybuilding coach mm -hmm. that are dead and in the ground and he hadn't gone to one funeral. So I have a reason to be pissed. So that's a shorter, abbreviated version of, you know, uh, of what he said. Exactly. What, what are your thoughts on what he said there? So there's a couple things. Uh, it depends where you want me to start. We can start from the beginning. The most, I don't know if I want to say funny because I don't think any of it's funny, but the most interesting part of it, and it basically outlines basically his direction of the whole thing, is right from the get-go. Because he says, you ask him if we ever worked together, and his response was, absolutely not. But he went and guest post for me in 96, and I asked him if he wanted to work with me, or basically mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. what he did. That's a complete lie. Like, that's an absolute lie. And when I explain it to you, you'll understand. He did absolutely guest post for me that year. Um, he came, he guest posed, we went out to eat. We, that was literally the first time that I'd probably talked to him. I didn't even know if he was in town until I got to the uh, venue and there was a Lamborghini <laughs> parked out in front of uh, the venue that some guy from Arkansas had brought down for him to drive around town all day. Um, he guest posed, I didn't have any issues there. We go out to eat and we literally talked about three things. Now here's the interesting thing. We didn't talk about nutrition. We didn't talk about athletes I was working with. We didn't talk about anything about that. The reason we didn't talk about that is because I wasn't working with athletes yet. I hadn't trained anyone. The only person I had trained up until that point is Kim from 92 to 96. I don't first get involved in nutrition until the 97 Olympia. At no point would there ever be a conversation of, of a kid, I was 27 years old or whatever, I don't know, 28, 9 years old, I would never be even talking in that realm because I wasn't there yet. Like, nobody's talking about, hey, Chad Nichols is working with athletes, he's, you know, doing this, he's doing that. That part hasn't even started. It's a year down the road. Um, so that is completely fabricated. 100% completely fabricated. In no way, shape, or form did that ever happen. That, why would he say that? Well, I'm going to tell you why he said that. Because I never asked him. But now we fast forward. So in 97, I do start working with athletes. Okay. And I trained Nasser El Sambadi, mm -hmm. and I trained Paul Dillette. Both of them go on. Most people think that Nasser could have won the Olympia that year. Dorian ends up winning. But no matter what, it was the best that Nasser had ever looked that year. 98, we come to the Arnold Classic, and Flex Wheeler wins. Now, a lot of people will say that's his best ever. I think his two best is his first one, 93, mm -hmm. which he was a little smaller, but conditioning was mm -hmm. phenomenal, and 98, which he was bigger, and again, conditioning phenomenal. Directly after the 98, Arnold, now this is where everybody's gonna, this is gonna be interesting. After the 98 Arnold, I get a phone call from Boyer Co. Now, if you're familiar with Boyer Co., Sean Ray and Boyer Co., they had a workout program called Flex Workout together. So they were friends. He also dated a girl named Debbie Mugley, who was a professional bodybuilder. My wife and Debbie Mugley were friends. So when we would go out to California, we would go out to eat with Boyer and Debbie, and we became friends. Boyer Co. calls me and says, listen, Chad, would you be interested in working with Sean Ray because the Olympia is open this year and we believe that with your guidance he could win the Olympia and so at this point I'm kind of like okay because I'd already started hearing like little tidbits of stuff that was starting to come like after the Flex Wheeler um, 
win at, at the Arnold, right? That was all kind of being directed at Sean, but, but rumors, right? Because at this point, we have no social media. Everything is just mm -hmm. hearsay yep. kind of stuff. And again, this can all be literally confirmed through Boyer Co. So, um, so Boyer calls me and asks me this, and I'm like, listen, honestly, there has to be three things that has to factor in for me to work with an athlete. One, I have to believe they're a hard worker. Two, I have to believe that they'll pay attention and do exactly what I say, they're, they're, that I'm not wasting my time with the athlete. And three, I have to believe that we are gonna click and that the person is not a, like that he's a decent human being. Sean doesn't match any of the three criteria. I have zero interest in working with him. From that point, I became the devil for sure. So from that point, everything literally escalated. So once I had talked to Boyer, that seems to be the point. Because before that, there's no interaction. There's no Chad this, Chad that, blah, 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 blah. After that point, that's when everything escalated. After you told Boyer, no, no chance. No, no chance. chance.